do you have going 2024? What's sort of your outlook next year? We're getting back to, I guess, back to our roots um, with that. And and so in January, we're going to launch a cohort that's focused on busy parents hold at least one rental and they're looking to actively grow that portfolio. We've been running that, you know, we've been running the mastermind for five years now, learned a lot through that entire process, what works, what doesn't work, what folks like, what folks don't like. Uh, A lot of folks don't like accountability, but man, it really works, you know, and, and, It really comes down to, I've had a lot of conversations with folks in the last couple of years where, as as my business coach put it, because I I was getting frustrated. I was like, man, we're not growing the mastermind. It's not growing like I I thought it would. And we we have a really good success rate with the people in there. He's like, well, explain to me what you're running into. right?" And I was like, I told him. And he goes, here's what I hear you saying, Jay. And, And he's a football guy and I'm a football guy. And he said, you're trying to sell 50 yard line Super Bowl tickets to somebody who's never been to a football game meaning they've never invested in themselves. They don't know what it means to join a community. He goes, you just got to figure out how to get them to a home game in the upper deck. And and then they'll get to, so we, we focus on, we're focusing on uh, helping people understand what a growth friend is and what a maintenance relationship is. And it's a real quick exercise. If we got time to do this and take like maybe three minutes. So a lot of the conversations I have are, are with people who are frustrated. They're not growing. They've got a rental, maybe a handful of rentals, and they're like, but I just can't get past this. So I said, okay, let's let's do this exercise, which I totally am stealing from Hal Elrod. Right. This is this is Hal's a great guy, but very, very smart guy. Yeah. <laughs> and so basically you take out a, a blank sheet of paper. At the top, you put two columns, or you make two columns. One's growth friends, the other one's maintenance relationships. And for the sake of this exercise, a growth friend is somebody who's talking every time you talk to them, it's about real estate investing, it's about building wealth, legacy wealth. Uh, financial freedom, financial independence. You're having those types of conversations, right? And for the sake of this exercise, everybody else is going to be in the maintenance relationship category, right? It could be your mom, could be your brother, sister, dad, whoever. If you're not talking about those growth kind of things, they're going to go in this other category. Okay. So now we got our categories lined up. Now you get out your phone and you go to your most recent phone call, right? Go, just use your top 20 or 30 phone, uh, most recent phone calls and just write down the person's name in whatever column that they fall into. And by the time I get done with this exercise with, with 99% of the people, I'm like, you don't even have to tell me your results, right? I know because we're having this phone call that you're heavy on maintenance relationships. I'm like, yes. I'm like, well, how do I change that? I was like, well, basically you just, you take your lunch hour and you make two phone calls to people who are growth friends, right? You get tired of talking to those same two people. You find two more people. And then you find, and you just keep doing it. And you're going to spend maybe 15 or 30 minutes a day doing this, right? And then, and then folks who run out of those growth friends or want to do more. And then I'm like, well, then you got to join a community, right? You got to join. You got to get really active. And this is not a community where you're going to just join and kind of hover in the background, right? You're going to, you're going to be engaged. You're going to be having uh, conversations online and offline. And you do this for six months and then you do the exercise again. You're going to be heavier on growth friends and you're going to have a lot of momentum, right? And so that's, that's our focus for 2024 is, is launching that cohort.
what is your definition of success? Happiness, right? And then you got to get what is happiness? What's the state of being happy? <laughs> this is college definition. <laughs> oh man, I'm going to play my cards right now. The book I'm reading right now is called Life Worth Living. I looked over because okay. it's right over there on my shelf, but it's kind of like this too. So it's funny. I'm, I'm like, I don't want to call it midlife crisis, but lately I've been like, mm. what's the, what is that life? What is that like best thing that we're yeah. after? And this book really dives into that. And it kind of goes in like, is happiness the goal? And what is happiness? You know, and with happiness, like you can't be happy without being sad. Like it's pretty deep, but oh, very, can't be very happy without being sad. That's, in, that's interesting. Yeah. That's that what is, blew my uh, mind. And they're like, there's all these philosophers throughout history that they kind of like cover that yeah. have these different thoughts around these things. And there's no right or wrong answer. It's the same with this question, but I'm kind of like you, if I'm, if I'm, I see you getting the nod. Is it time for you to? That's my, that's my son. He's making time for, oh, okay. with him. <laughs> I thought that was like a, put your real pants on. Nod. <laughs> <laughs> that's coming next. Yeah. No, that's, that's a, like, um, you know, and that's something I've learned. I'm learning, you know, for the last couple of years, even though, you know, I'm around this group of monkeys in here 24 seven. I mean, you know, we homeschool them. Um, we're traveling, you know, but for the last couple of years, you know, adjusting to that lifestyle, running businesses, there's been times where I'm just like so annoyed and not happy and it comes out and goes toward them. And, but here recently, I'd probably say in the last six months or so, I'm like, no, oh, damn, this is a pretty good life we have. Like I get to spend all this time with the kids and probably, probably what's resonated the most and i can't remember who said this but basically you only you only have small kids for a certain amount of time right and it's very small and with our son if unless we do it right you know we've got you know a couple like four years before he's a teenager and then all of a sudden mom and dad aren't cool anymore you know and then then he's going to be essentially quote unquote gone until probably mid-20s or whatever and then like all right now give me some you know and so it that's just really resonated with me. And I'm and I like, all right, you get frustrated, you get mad, you get sad because we're we're not growing fast enough. But let's turn around and focus on what you're missing out on because of those feelings, right? And so it has really changed my perspective, especially because the kids, they only really want 50 minute increments of your time and then they're on to something else. Right. And I don't want them to constantly hear no. And for the last couple of years, that is the way it's been. No, I got to work. No, I got to go on this call. No, I got to do this. And um, I don't like the other day I was telling somebody that uh, a habit that I'm trying to break is that. Um, so I'm, I'm the disciplinary one in the parental relationship. My wife is the loving, caring. I'm the disciplinary one. And so the kids react different to us. And I the what makes me explode and yell at them is when they don't respond to her. You know? And so I'm I'm learning that if I just let her deal with it her own way, that I don't explode. And that I don't I in that way I can get out of the habit that I'm creating, which is go in, explode on everybody and just, you know, yell and then take a walk. And then come back from the walk and apologize to everybody. And then let's just go like it never happened. Right. Like that's, that's the habit or, or thing that I've created here recently. And I don't want that to be the case, you know? And so, um, yeah, it's to kind of circle back to your answer is it's just happiness, right? It's just being happy and man, just loving on those kids and making sure they're happy is, is that's the happiness to me, you know? Oh, that's so cool, man. Though I, I really appreciate your transparency. I mean, I'm kind of the same way as like, there's things that I do that I look back like, like that. I mean, I get super mad too. Like I have, I have this sort of breaking point where I'm just like, all right, I hit my limit, you know, and same story where yeah. I'll yell or whatever it is. And, and it's like, yeah, I don't really want to be doing that. And I also want to be viewed that way. Like, I don't want my kids to think I'm like this yelly yeah. dad, you know? And like, but then I think really the key is one, say it out loud. Other people hearing you right like totally resonate yeah. and then two is what are you gonna do about it which i love you're like yeah. all right i'm gonna find the way that works that i don't have to do that and i i really respect that so 